Neil, good to see you. Long journey back on Tuesday night, but I suppose those three points made it that little bit shorter. Yeah, it was a good journey back really after after the last ten minutes of the game, should I say. Uh, the rest of it wasn't um, exciting enough for us, but we got the result, we went in there and the boys stuck together and showed a lot of commitment for the cause. And you say sometimes you have to battle that result and I think we did in the end. What do you think a result and a performance like that does for team spirit? Because you, you gain it quite a lot from that, surely. Of course you always do if you score late on, it always gives you the but I think it helps the boys understand that there's a fighting spirit in there. I always say to the fans as well, we've got a fighting spirit in there. And the most important thing is the fans go home happy. And as you say, maybe not happy after 18 minutes, but the way they showed and the way we changed the game, players coming on changing the game, I think you'll see a lot of the confidence that the boys are fighting for the club. Has anyone since that had to put an arm around someone like Aidan Marsh? who was taken off towards the end of the first half. Lots of managers mentioned it to Neil at full time, would have waited till half time, but you made the brave decision to pull him off a little bit early. Gaffer's got over 500 games as manager, so he knows what he's doing. We had a discussion on the bench what we thought we should do, and let's get it done now before we go in 1 0 down. Um, I've done a little bit with him this afternoon. The Gaffer spoke to him straight after the game, all the staff spoke to him. We've been in this situation as players, we also know, but I think he took it really well in the end. He was disappointed. Came in today, look, looks at his clips, wants to get better and, and train really well today. The other sort of part of that, the substitution the other night, of course, we mentioned Scott Burgess as well. He must have come in today flying after his, his little cameo the other night. He's been like every day since we've been in the club, really, to be honest with you. Every day he's trained hard, he's got on with his job, he's never complained, he's always done extra. And he got his opportunity and, and we threw him on and, and we've seen what he can do. And I think that's not just to him, I think that goes to look at everybody in the football club. Uh, you've got to work hard every day because you never know when that opportunity will come. Do you think he felt within himself that he had to prove himself to everybody? Because he's not played for so long, it's the middle of every last time he put any appearance in the Oxford team. As you say, when a new manager comes in, everybody's got to be on their toes. Don't mean if you've been playing every game or haven't played every game, you've still got to be on your toes. And he has been on his toes and deserves his opportunity. We all said that um, when he was put in, in the side and put in the squad, and when we looked at the bench, let's put him on there because he, he's proved every, every training session that he's got someone to prove to us. And I think he proved to everybody, but the most happiest I would think for him is, is how the boys reacted. The boys really enjoyed his company and the boys give him a big cheer and a big cuddle after the game for what he come on. I think that's good for team spirit and that's good for being a footballer. Neil also mentioned at the end of the game that he was a that he was somebody that the rest of the squad should be looking up to. And he said there's a number of players haven't been training well, haven't been giving a hundred percent. Do you hope that that is now going to be the case and they can look at him and say, you know what, we might not have had a game, we might not look as though we're in the picture, but if we do buckle down, we do have a chance. 100% that's what should have happened. As soon as a new manager walks in the door, doesn't matter if you've had a fallout with the last manager, what's going on in the manager, nothing you can do about it. But now you have to focus a new manager and do what he wants and get on with it. And the manager is right, one or two of them haven't come in and haven't got on with it and there's been knocking on our doors and complaining about this and complaining about that. He hasn't. He's got this opportunity and it's just good for him. I don't expect you to throw players under the bus and name certain players. I'm sure our supporters will be able to put two and two together and be pretty close to, to the people you're talking about. Do you think that will change now that he's come out and he's spoken openly about some of the players' attitude and having watched what happened with Burgess? I would hope so. I was up, but you never know with footballers, you never know what they'll do now, what they're going to think. They'll probably not think it's them we're talking about, which is always difficult. But now they've got on with it. Today they've trained really, really everybody. So hopefully, him, him getting an opportunity. Everybody else has had a look at the situation and thought, I want to be a part of this. Let's look ahead then to Bromley. Another big game, really tough game again. I know they lost their opening two games of the season, but I think they defeated Chesterfield on Tuesday. was their first defeat since that, so you're going to have to be the best again. Yeah, we know what, we know what to expect. That They're going to be a bit strong, organised, probably sit in, come here and sit in and trying to catch on the break. Um, but we just have to do what we've been doing. We have to start the game better. As you see the other night, we didn't start the game really, really well. But we will start better and, and focus on us. Um, and at home and, and try and get the crowd on our, on our side straight away and get a result at home. It's a Bromley side that always seems to be up there in and around the playoffs year after year after year on probably a, a smallish budget or a smaller football club compared to York City. What is it that they do so well do you think that makes them so successful? I just think they're all staying stay together, the managers got them all fighting for each other and that team spirit like we showed the last 10 minutes of the game, that's what you need to do and I think they've been doing it every week for a few years now as you say. Always a difficult place to go at Bromley and play and, and get results and I think away from home they go in there with a the game plan of not conceding and trying to catch you on the break and say they've got a lot of good players in their squad. Look at your squad then, how is everybody? Is anyone, have you just got the same squad as you had the other night or do you have more players to pick from this week? No, at the moment we're the, we're the same. Um, obviously we've took training today, um, Crooks is not fit to play yet but he's back in training. 
so we'll just have a look at him, catch up on him. Obviously, next week's a massive week for all the players. We're going to have a bear week. We can really get stuck into him, fitness sessions and football sessions. Um, so we'll probably leave him until next week and probably go with similar what we've got. Um, hopefully, there's no more illnesses around the camp and go from there. Miles, how's he? He's okay. He's not too bad. So there's one or two of them being struggled, but we're all getting there. We've rested a couple today from training. A few of the boys have trained. A few of the boys have gone to the gym and done some gym work. What we needed to rest and get some fresh legs in. Um, but the manager wants to see a reaction from them all. We saw a reaction from all this afternoon, and uh, we go from there tomorrow. I talked about the partnership up front between Lionel John Lewis and Deepu Akinyemini. How much do you work on those partnerships between in certain areas of the pitch? Well, the, when we've had time, obviously we've been in 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 for about a month now. And we've only had one bare, bare week, which has been t tough. Um, but they've got a really good partnership already. Um, they've got a good partnership off the pitch, which always helps. Um, and we're working on that. The manager tries to get a little bit in for the set the forwards as much as he can. But at the moment, it's just games and rest, really. So we will work on the forwards next week, and then myself and Tony will do midfield work and defensive work next week. Depot looks like he's relatively happy, though, to be pushed out towards that left hand side, where naturally, I presume, he wants to be right through the middle. Yeah, I think he's really scoring goals, he wants to score goals outside. But we changed the team, and he never complained. And he was one of them who did the job, especially in the second half for the team. It's not about individuals, it's about the team and I think, that, as you said, the second half performance was a lot better because everybody worked together. And you must be looking forward to getting this game out of the way and then having that free week. Yeah, I like, I like the games though, I must admit, yeah, the our games are important, that's what it's all about. But it'd be good to get to know the players again, get, really get to, 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 to speak to them on a training ground and how they want to work and how we expect them to work. I think this is the week after a month's been in here, they'll understand how we want to work and they will have a bit of shock next week because the fitness sessions will be tougher next week. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but let me quickly ask you about the FA Cup draw as well. You now know it's going to be need a market. Yeah. In a way, that's possibly a harder tie than Peterborough because they're really struggling at the bottom of their league. Need them run a couple of places behind them, really, if you look at the pyramid. Yeah, I've seen Peterborough as well this year, so I expect it to be done. But Needham's had a great result. Obviously, it went to a replay and they won 3 0. And we've had the paperwork through already. We'll send some of them to have a look at them to make sure we do our own work. We won't take it like this is the FA Cup, anything that can happen. And we want to be in the, the next round of the, the FA Cup. Because yeah, you know about York's FA Cup history, but the FA Cup for all these teams at all levels is such a big money spin, especially for York City. I know the owner's got a lot of dosh, but it'd be nice if he didn't have to keep putting his hand in his pocket and some money came from elsewhere. Yeah, I do remember my Keith Alchie, I remember all them years ago when he was going to go. Yeah, FA Cup's important to all of us. I mean, we was all got brought up on the FA Cup. Fans love the FA Cup. You never know where you can end up. You can easily get to the fifth round of the FA Cup and, and draw somebody at home and just never know. That's what it's all about. Great, thank you. Uh, Neil, just touching upon the Dagenham game a little bit more. Uh, another late, late winner. How much does that improve the mood around the camp? I think it's good for the camp. I think it proves that we're we're sticking together and fighting for each other. I'd say it wasn't one of our best performances of the night, I must admit. Uh, but we stuck together and we stuck in there and we got the results in the end. Yeah, he touched the ball in the first half and it wasn't really the standards. What, what's your thoughts going into that? Are you, do you talk to your players about how you want them to start the game and then just maybe wait to see how the other team have set up halfway through the game? We, we'll have an idea. We've we'll done our own work before. That when the team's come in, how they was going to play, we had an idea they were, they was going to play a four. Um, we just didn't understand how they would get their midfield plays in. In fact, they was really brave and played 4-2-4. Four, four. So they had tried to overload us with the full-backs. But when we got... When we made the change, probably into when Marshy went off, we got a bit more organised. We put three on to him, and I think that's where it started to change a little bit. Obviously, conceding the goal like we did was disappointing, and could have conceded a couple more. But we stayed in the game. Um, we got organised a little bit, and we made the substitutions, and that, that changed the game for us by, by making opportunities for us to score. Yeah, and look at the Bromley game. Andy Woodman, one of the most highly established managers in this league now. What are your thoughts going up against a manager with his sort of calibre? Known Andy for a long time. I think he's done an unbelievable job there. Come through as a goalkeeper and coach, and now he's he's threw his hat into the ring as a manager. Um, really tough side. Got a really good home record. Always difficult to go there. I think they'll come in here and sit in and try and catch us on the break. Watched a couple of their games already. I say he's done a fantastic job, and it's going to be a tough afternoon for us. Yeah, and just looking from his squad, they've got Michael Cheek up from. He's got six goals this season. Um, he's one of the most established players in this league as well. What are your thoughts going up against an opponent like that, and how important is it for? Your defenders to be just with the man's on for the game. Well, well, our main thing is to stop the service into him. There's going to be an important thing that he doesn't get the service, and then when we when he does get it, we have to be tight. We have to be make sure we mark him on the right side and, and defend properly. But it's not just about him; it's how they get the ball into him is going to be more important for us. Yeah, and looking at your team news, Alex Woodyard is he back in training? Alex Woodyard trained train today. We're just going to have a look, see, see how it is. We'll get through to him. We'll make a decision tomorrow after training uh, to see what we think. 
Um, so you've got one or two injuries, one or two upset stomachs at the moment still, so we just have to go from there. Yeah, is it sort of the same situation with Thierry Lottefair with Jack Stott as well? Yeah, they're, they're, they're not in training yet. Stott is back in training, to train only for the second day today, so he won't be involved. Uh, they need to do to catch up. Thierry used to have a little problem with his hamstring and we'll probably know a little bit more next week on him. Yeah, and you mentioned Crooks probably won't be playing this weekend, so you without Crooks and Lottie Fair, are you any closer to bringing in that left back that hardly sort of touched upon? No, not at the moment. At the moment, we're, we're dealing with what we've got. I don't know what's going on this afternoon. I've not been in my years to the ground what's going on. So at the moment, we're going to go with what we've got, and um, it's up for them to keep their place. Yeah, and the last one, the team news uh, David Stockdale and Michael Duckworth, you know, both long term injuries. Have you made any progress on them or any sort of time scale when you might be back? Um, only stockies, I think. He has done seven weeks he's been out now, so they say with the injury it's going to be 12 weeks. I know he's in the gym. I know he's doing bit extras in the gym. Um, and that, and the, after that, I'm on too sh unsure because I've been on the training ground getting everything organised on the training ground and not had much to do with the long-term injuries over the short-term at the moment. Uh, last one from me, going away from York City actually, but obviously a close connection to you and Tony McMahon. Scunthorpe United just had their takeover. How brilliant the news is that? Yeah, it's, it's great news. Obviously the football club has gone through a lot since I was managing there when there was a takeover then and they've had a one takeover and now they've got another. I think it's not only Scunthorpe, it's good for all these clubs and let's just hope South End carry on and get some really good news and that goes through, which it looks like it's going to do and I think it's just good for football. We don't want any more berries happening. Yeah, thank you very much. Come on, chaps, you two guys are be brave. Don't be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you talked about team spirit towards that like, last 10 minutes. How does that boost you going into your next game? Well, I just think if you can get some team spirit, it's, it's, you might not play well on the night, but you know you have a look around you and you've got some characters <clears> in the side that are going to help you through it. And I think that's what happened on, on Saturday. We, we, we've made a couple of subs that changed the game. Yes, it does, but you still got some leaders in there that's going to stick there. Don't concede the second goal. And if you don't concede the second, you've always got a chance of catching, catching them off, off a bit. Yeah, conceding goals has been the downfall of this season. You're not shy in front of goal. Like, how are you going to help uh, the defence lead into the attack? Because you're not, you're not having trouble scoring. It's stopping them scoring. Yeah, well, the main thing is, and people just have a worry about the defenders. Everybody's got to defend. From two, we've got to defend. If you're playing with the two, defending starts there, and getting a mentality that everybody's got to work hard, stop crosses, stop the ball going forward, make sure you cover people. If somebody slips, set plays. Um, and we're getting that in there, and I think that showed the other night. I said we didn't play very well, we only conceded one goal, but have easily conceded another, keeper made a couple of good saves. But we stayed in the game, and sometimes when you don't play well, you've just got to try and keep as, as least amount of goals going in. Um, you talked about Burgess, obviously, he's been in the fray for a lot of this season. Um, what was the decision making with putting him in the side? What was. Well, Burgess has been training really well, as we say. Never complained, got on with it, and, and he's caught our, our eyes. And Tony McMahon obviously met, knew him from last year. Um, we, we put him on the bench, and then when, when we had opportunity, we was going to change it and put a 10 on how he wanted to play. He was ideal fit for us. So we went in there, did really well, had half a chance of scoring, set the first goal up, and involved in the second goal. I think just beats him confidence. But I think it's good for everybody to realise that the manager watches everybody, just to watch the players that think are going to play. Everybody's got to keep on their toes. Some big games coming up, there's FA Cup ties coming up, the manager might change teams, formations, everybody needs to be ready. Exactly. Um, you said, I think you've got three teams in the top seven coming up. How big is it to get a result against these big sides and establish yourself? Well, Bromley's the main thing. We, we go from Bromley from there. It's, it's really important that you try and keep, keep on the results and not... not get any many losses, that's what the idea is, if you can pick a draw up, yeah, against the bigger teams, but we'll be looking for every game to try and win it, and that's the way the manager set out, and that's where we'll set up, try and win the game, we'll do our own work, as you have to, it's about what we do with the ball, we have to be better than was the other night, especially when we go away from home, um, create more chances, as I say, stop conceding silly goals. Thank exactly. you. I'll, uh, let you know. Right, so Neil, starting off attacking in Redbridge on Tuesday evening, big three points, of course, another late winner, making a bit of a habit of that, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, as you say, it's a win. As I said before, we didn't play very well, but we stuck in there. Um, we made changes, and, and as you say, you get a squad, and you expect your subs to come on and change the game, and I think they changed it a little bit from taking nothing away the manager did it. Took my ass off earlier because we needed to. As you say, big decisions have to be made, that's why he's the manager. Yeah, absolutely. Seven goals this season for Deepo Akinyemi. He's kicked on, that's for sure, started off really strongly. Three in his last three as well. How important a player is Deepo to York City, then? 
at the moment is really important because he's scoring the goals, but he's, he's, his work rate's been excellent and obviously he missed a lot of pre-season, so he's still getting himself fitness, he still needs to get sharp, but when we changed the formation, he went out wide, wider, he never complained, he just got on with his job and, and that's what you want. The manager's going to have to change, chop and change people at the minute. If we can bring a couple of bodies in, it'd be excellent, but at the moment he's doing the business, but he's happy to play anywhere. How important is that versatility you mentioned with Depot for the whole squad? Is that something that maybe some of the squad could learn from him, do you think? I think so. I think that's what we need. And as you say, at times we're going to have to change it because we're not playing very well. Or at times we're going to have to change it because we need to create something else. And say he's happy to do it. He's happy to play anywhere in the front three. He said he didn't drop into a, into a 10 for us. So that's what we expect from people. Brilliant. Uh, looking ahead to Bromley now, so that'd be really strong, obviously, other than defeats in the first two, I think David mentioned earlier. They're unbeaten in 11 out of the 12 games, of course, losing to Chesterfield in the week. How are you feeling ahead of the game and how valuable would a home win be? Home games are always important. If you want to push up the league, you, you need to get a good home form. As I say, I think they'll come here, I think they'll sit in, um, defend deep, so we can't get in behind them and then trying to catch them on the, on the counter attack. Got some really good players, he's done a really good job there, Woody. And I expect them that I expect them to be up and around the, the promotion this season. Fantastic everything from me. Thank you. Perfect. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers.